HF mode. Bluetooth is waiting for a connection. Here we are, everybody. This is the studio, Deanne Fitzpatrick Studio. Welcome today. You can see what I'm working on right over there. Take my mask off here so I can be with you. And I am today getting ready for um, uh, the live, and this is what I'm working on, and I will show you more about that later. It's a pattern. It's called Fresh Sheets, and it's been on our website for a long time. I'm going to show you it. So welcome to live at the studio with Deanne Fitzpatrick. Isn't it gorgeous? So I've been working on this, and we're going to talk about it more in color school. So I'm not going to talk about this a lot today, but I'm going to show you today a few different things, and one of them is focused around that cloud. I want to show you. Um, I want to show you today about how to hook a cloud in an interesting way. And then I have a few other things too that I'm gonna to talk to you about. One of them is the edges of your rug. Sarah emailed me and asked me about the edges of your rug. And she wanted to explain the different cuts of wool. And I was gonna do a tiny little book reading today too, I thought. So that should be good. Now today we have Megan Quayle from Quiz Pam Sis. We have Ingrid Taylor. Ingrid comes most weeks and I appreciate that, Ingrid. Carmen Sutton, um, Hakan is here. Beverly McGinnis, Devon, Devon Query from North Carolina. Oh, I thought you were in Kentucky. Um, and uh, Helene Dontremont and Nina Seaman, Pamela Landon, and Haley Perry, my niece from Loop by Loop Studio is here. And we just got the mic working, so that's good. Gonna fix my hair. I'm gonna pass this over to Angela. I'm gonna flip it back. We have 177 people so far. Tanya White is from Bermuda. And we have Vicki Rice Yanda from Nebraska. Sue Bone from Bedford. We have lots of people here. So there you go, Angela. So there was a few questions this week. And if you email me at, uh, you know, any e email me, um, we'll, we can answer your questions. But one of the questions this week was to explain different cuts of wool. So um, the cut of wool is simple. Three is three millimeter, four is four millimeter, I believe. That's my understanding. Six is six millimeter. So um, that's how it is. So the three being the narrowest and 10 generally being the, the largest. I like a lot of hand cutting and I'm gonna do some hand cutting in this rug. So, uh, so that's basically how it works with your cuts of wool. Now your cut of cloth, sometimes I think a good idea is, is to cut your cloth. Um, like if you have a piece of cloth cut, some of it number six and some of it number eight, and that'll give you just a slightly different texture because of the size of the cut. And that's a good idea. Um, and do you uh, watch your borders to keep your rug straight? Well, you know, I've been known to not watch them closely. But if, for example, you want to make sure your borders are perfectly straight, you can create a holding line along the outside edge and just make sure that that line is straight and you keep your holding line and that will work really, really well. as long as you keep that line straight and that way you can hook up to this line the really important thing is is to take that line out afterwards because you don't I don't really like seeing a rug with a thin line around it you know it's not a border it's clearly a holding line so that's how people keep the edge of the edges of their rugs really straight I just use my eye and truthfully I don't care if my edges are perfectly straight and it doesn't bother me. Some people might get on your nerves, so you might want to do that. I have a nice, uh, I want to remind you about the webinar. We decided today that the the webinar is not till the 5th of December, right? Is, is that the date? Mm -hmm. Is that right, Angela? Yeah. Um, but um, I am going to be here, so uh, someone's going to help, help me because I'm really bad with times and dates. I was meeting friends for lunch today. Apparently at 11.30, but at 5 after 12, they called and said, are you coming? Because I thought it was at 12 o'clock. So I'm really, it's a little thing, but I will be at that webinar because it's live. And at that moment, I have to be there and we're just going to hook for the whole two hours. So it's like you're going to spend a Saturday afternoon hooking with me. So I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, 
the webinar is going to be about hooking snow. So that's December 5th and you can register today. You should register today. And you also have to remember that, um, that the last day to register will be December 1st because we're going to be sending out um, the links, the list of materials that you're going to need because most, I, if you know, if you hook at all, you probably have most of these materials right, right there. Um, and I want to show you what I made today. So I was thinking about the red rug and I decided to put together a package and it's called the red rug package. And so what I've done is I've put together a package with Sari, some banana silk, some velvet, a nice thick red, and a couple of thin reds. I'm going to put in two different Briggs and Little Reds or, or two skeins of Briggs and Little Red. And that will give you basically what you need to get going on a great red rug yourself if you want to do a red rug. Now, this is the thing. We only have 12. I think I think there's 12 or a dozen of these packages. So if you want one, go on the website. It's under uh, wool cloth, under our uh, stash builders, the collections, and it's called the Red Rug Collection. And you'll see it. It's pictured with this bow which I took out of my window boxes. And I want to show you my window boxes because they are, uh, my son po made a post I saw that <laughs> mom is carefully putting together our window boxes. And this is what I do. I keep things very simple. My friend Krista visited the other day and I had a, this, these are my little window boxes right here. But I just like to come in for a little freshness every day. So I'm going to put that back in my window box. And that's all I do. These are, so, you know, they're really, I keep things, you know, when you've got a lot to do, if you just keep things really simple, it's so much easier. Like, you know, if I can find some red berries by the side of the road, I am going to uh, get those. Angel's having trouble getting back up here. She never knows where I'm going or what I'm going to do. She's incredibly patient. And she's also my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's good to me. So, all right. So that, uh, I just think that, you know, like if you do have a few friends over and I know like here in Atlantic Canada, we, we can still gather in small groups, but you know, instead of making 50 things, just making one thing and a great pot of coffee is fine, you know, um, just keeping things simple. So I just always stick a few boughs in there and a few red sticks. And, um, uh, sometimes I put some rose hips in, just keep it, you know, we don't, we don't have to fuss a lot. Um, so I hope this rug and I'm really happy with it. And let's talk today about, uh, let's talk today about how to make a cloud really great. And then I'm going to do a little reading for you from one of my books. So what I'm working on here is making these clouds interesting. So I've got this little bit of this sweater like it's just an old sweater okay I picked it up somewhere along the way so I'm just going to hand cut that it is a wool sweater a lot of times people say you know can you use anything yeah you can use anything but you get out of something what you put into it so it's just like I, I sort of liken it to cooking you know if you use butter or margarine I, I always feel like it tastes a little better with butter so uh you know uh I, I, so I, I like to put wool into my, so what I'm going to do to make this interesting is I'm going to outline. So you see, I've drawn these clouds and then I drew another cloud, just kind of followed the same pattern and, and did it inside. So here I go. So I was interviewed this morning. I was interviewed twice this lately. Um, I was interviewed for the Left Brain Artist. So if you Google that podcast and go to the Left Brain Artist, Suzanne Redman uh, did an interview with me, and I really appreciated that. It was a lovely chance to chat about my work. But this morning, my husband, he has a little tiny talk show on the Mansour's Facebook page. And I'm going to share that with you guys later. It's uh, and he interviewed me about how about business and how I started my business. So if you're interested in those interviews, just go on over and or or come to our Facebook page and you will see the links to them. Okay. So I've outlined this cloud right right here, and I've outlined it in a sweater, which is a slightly different texture. And now I have this pink cloth, and I have this really light gray cloth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and talking about cuts of wool, the pale pink and we're 
right here. Um, so I'm going to take the pale pink and I'm just going to do the inside of the cloud in the pale pink. Okay, so this isn't, I'm not trying to make a cloud look like a cloud. I'm trying to make a cloud feel like a cloud. There's a big difference there, isn't there? But that's ultimately what I want, is I want them to feel a certain way. Um, so I'm going to outline that cloud. with some cloth. You see, I'm, I am very careful about staying within my edge. You can still see the ink line right there, right? I'm not going out because it'll make it, it'll make it grow, go bigger. Now I've got some velvet and remember we have our velvet packages on. on. Sorry, Dan. Yeah. Can everybody see the video? We had a little glitch, but we came back. Oh, okay. We had a little glitch. All right. So here's my velvet. And okay. here's, here's my background. Is there any questions today, Angela? Anybody saying anything out there? They love your sweater. <laughs> oh, it's Papillon. It's from 30 Church Women's Clothing, which is now owned by my son. And... You can go to 30church.com and get this sweater, but let's show them my boots. Angela, oh, yeah. Angela and I were out doing taping for the harbor, and I just love my boots. They're Clark's, and they're available at 30 Church, too. I just love them, and she laughed because I said, did you get my boots in the shop? That was what. <laughs> <laughs> but they just make me happy, and they're really comfortable, and I love looking at them. Anyway, you know, you guys all know I love shoes, right? I can't help it. just love shoes. I love comfortable shoes. You know, they can be a heel, they can be all kinds, but I just love. This fall, I've been mostly wearing sweaters and boots. So I'm just starting my, my background here. So the, the background of this is going to be gray, and I've got to decide what I'm going to do in that cloud. So I've got all this white here. I think I'm just going to get some big merino. Um, well, let me get big merino in this. Okay, so... I'm going to put this nice cream. This is a yarn that we just got in. It's from the studio. It's a studio pick. It's, it's a $14.95 yarn. It has a bit of acrylic in it, but I really like it. And I like, I'm going to hook this really high and puffy. Okay. How thick are your strips, Dan? This one here? It's this thick. Is that what she, she the, means? The strips. That oh, you're the cutting? cloth? Yeah. They were num it was all on a number eight. So... I'm hauling it nice and high, making it really fluffy. What about, is there any preference for the hand cut versus the machine cut? Um, it's just a personal preference, really. When you cut by machine, you get a very even, even ridge, you know, but... Um, I kind of kind of like cutting by hand some. So I've cut this gray because I want to use this gray velvet. And remember, we have packages of velvets on the website. Uh, they're, there's, I don't know, there's like 10 colors or something for $9.95. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But so, um, so that's a hand cut, right? Right there. So it it's a lot wobblier, right? Fair fair enough. It it is quite a bit wobblier than this is a machine cut. Dan, Sue wants to know she's a relatively new hooker yeah. and her wool frays often and looks terrible. Well, that has to do with the wool that, she, that Sue has on hand. So some wools fray a lot more. So you want to make sure that you get a wool that's a certain weight because if a wool is too lightweight or if it's a surge, it, it is going to fray. You know, it's just it just is going to fray. So now I'm back to my cloud again. And I've got this kind of pale yellow color against the pink and then there's the outline of the beige and I went over to the to the edge here so what did we talk about in the newsletter this week oh but my phone 
doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm, you know, sometimes I check my email by mistake. I go, and then I just shut it down and say, no, you can have that later. Just like a dessert, you know, like if you go out to a, if you go out to a restaurant, uh, no, not a restaurant, but if you go out to a somewhere and you buy like a really nice dessert to take home, you don't eat it before your supper. So that's what I'm trying to tell myself. So I'm really trying with my email. I check it in the morning. I check it in around noon. I check it in the late afternoon and I check it in the early evening. And boy, it, it's interesting because what happened to me the other day was I had something on my mind. I was actually going to email somebody and I, I was still around the, t like, I, like I'll give myself a minute or two when I'm in the evening, like, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, and to respond to people. And I went to go email somebody. And in the moment that I went to do that, I checked the email and then I lost my train of thought about who I was going to email. And it took me about five minutes to remember what I was doing. It's about staying focused and sticking with your train of thought. And I find that, you know, it's like if you're hooking or if you're reading a book, but you're constantly checking your phone, you're not getting to where you would get to if you stayed focused. That's what my experience is anyway. Uh, you know, I just don't get as far. I don't get as far into the book. I don't get as deeply into my hooking. So I, it's been, it's really working good for me. Now, you know, uh, it is a bit of an addiction. So it's, it's, I'm just taking it day by day and doing my best with it. But I feel like I have more time. And every time now that I, that I have time and I don't quite know what to do, I don't check my email. So that's good. You know, I don't just do it for the sake of doing it. Now I've got it white up here. So I am tempted to go down there with the white too, but I have to see. So this is just a way of doing a cloud that makes the cloud look a bit more decorative. Okay? And it's just a way that I, I like to do clouds. Right there. Excuse me, Angela. I'll be right back. Okay, so I think what I will do, I'm looking at this now, and I'm thinking this would look really good if I carried the white down on the bottom. What are you using for the lady's hair? Uh, I use velvet. Yeah, I think it looks really nice. And what are your thoughts on twisting your wool cloth as opposed to having it all? I like it. Matching. I like it with a little twist. Like I like to feel like my hand has been there, you know? That's how I feel. Not everybody feels that way, but I, I feel that way. I like to, you know, I like you to know that I've been there. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I don't know. The handmade, it's just, it's, it's about showing that the hand was there, right? In a mug, like when you get a mug and you can, when you put it in your hands, you can just feel that someone else has made that mug. Anyway. So that's my story for today is to get a little, um, to think about simplicity as you go into the holiday season. I think that's really important. And, you know, um, some of us were just, were being forced to simplify for all kinds of reasons, um, to do to, uh, COVID. But, uh, just, that was my little message to you today. Like my window boxes aren't fancy. They're not grand, but like, let's go into this beautiful season with the idea of keeping things simple. I think that's great. <coughs> I have a tickle in my throat today. I don't have a cold or anything. I'm good. Um, so, and the other thing I wanted to talk to you about today was the edges that you can create a holding line on your rug and then take it out and keep your edges straight. We talked about different widths and different cuts. I mostly use number six and number eight, but a number three cut is just a very narrow cut and a number four cuts a little wider and number five is a little wider number six is a little wider number eight is a little wider and it just goes up like that um every week i thought i should show you the basic technique of what hooking is
because some of you may be here for the first time. So you take your strip in your hand and you hold it between your fingers. You bring your end up and then you go down and you catch it and you bring it up loop by loop. That's what rug hooking is. There's only one stitch. You guys are probably all amazed I can hook evenly, aren't you? Yeah, you're all saying, oh God, I didn't know she could hook like that. But I can, I just don't. <laughs> Pretty fast, too. Ah, pretty fast. Yeah, pretty fast and even. Um, so that is um, that is something I, I should re remember to show you each week. Um, I think we're probably getting about, uh, about there. I'm going to show you that red collection again. Actually, can you identify some of the materials in this rug, they're asking? Uh, yes. This, is, uh, this, this one down here is our Mona Lisa. Uh, uh, what is it? Not Mona Lisa. <laughs> Who painted? Who painted Mona Lisa from our artist series? Isn't that ridiculous? It's not Leonardo, 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 Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo. Thank Leonardo. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say Michelangelo. Uh, this is just a, a sheep's gray from Briggs and Little. And this is, was one of our, um, and the whites. Uh, this is a big, thick Briggs and Little. This is our European white. This is a velvet. Yep. And, of course, we use some big merino. And if you, I'm going to add this, too, which is... Uh, Big Merino, I'll show you this. This everybody gets everybody crazy because it's so gorgeous. So I can't help but show you. Here it is. It is Earth Wave and Big Merino. It's just an excellent. Actually, th this is a really good question that people are asking because I did, um, I had a gentleman in an earlier who I was giving um, a lesson to and he was pulling out his loops, his previous yeah, loops. Yeah, just like this. He was going lifting one up, lifting another one up, lifting another one up and he's pulling out the last one. So what do you do to... It's about tension. So it's about slowing down when you first start, and it's about tension and sort of going at it at the same speed. And um, if you pull your loops just a little bit higher, you get a better chance. And also the pinching under, underneath that I showed you last week, if you're holding it, then you're, you're almost holding the last loop in as you're going along. So that, those are two little tips that help, will help you. The pinching underneath, pulling your wool a little bit higher, and just slowing down a little bit and just letting the tension, uh, just trying to, you know, like, that's why I always say hooking is a meditative craft. If you just, like, if you just can let yourself get into the zone. You know, I'm probably going to finish most of this rug this afternoon. Harry's coming down at 3, and Harry is my is not my printer. He is the printer for the community, but I always, we always call him Harry the printer. He's coming down at three and we're going to go for a walk and then I'm probably going to come back. I'm probably going to make a cup of tea. Um, and, or even before he comes, I might make a cup of tea and I'm probably going to have a real go with this rug. Uh, cause you know, like I'm such a fiend that I could actually, I could almost get this done this afternoon. I could, I think I could, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. So come on out and see the red. So, Deanne, I think I might be in trouble. Why? What'd you do now? We posted the other day something about Greg's yarns, and people are asking about them. Oh, they are. And I forgot. Oh, you have to tune in next week. Yeah, I didn't post them. No, I know. We didn't get them posted. Well, Kaylee's off on Thursday, which is a problem that Kaylee takes a day off every week. I really, like, I don't know why. Are you watching, Kaylee? Kaylee's off on Thursdays, and she does a lot of our posting. So we didn't get that up, but we have a new yarn. It's a new merino, and we really like it. It's thinner, but it's lovely. I also want to mention to you that this calendar's out. So far, we've raised $500 about with the calendar this year. And usually each year, we raise two or $3,000, and we give it to different communities. We give some to the Christmas cheer box. We give some to mental health uh, projects in the community. Through the Cumberland Healthcare Foundation, we give some uh, to the Sexual Health Center. We're giving some here and some there. And uh, we spread it out, some to the food bank. And there's a, a different rug for every month. And uh, last, last year, I had some quotations in there in some of the extra spaces. But this year, we left the extra spaces open for you guys so you could write extra things in there yourself. And because uh, we thought that's functional, what you want in a calendar. Anyway, the calendar's lovely. It's $25, includes shipping all the money except for the four or five the five dollars or whatever that it costs to get printed i think it's around cost about six that's the cost of making it um uh will go to the community to different projects so it's a great christmas gift because it fits in an envelope and you can just mail it anywhere and that is it and this is our red rugs 
uh, red rug collection and I'm, I'm, I kind of got the desire to do more of these collections. I don't know why. So I'm just testing this one. This is the red rug collection, but I can just sort of see putting together other packages. Like right now, let's see if I could put together a package here. <coughs> Come on, Angela, we'll do it. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, well, let's see. You really make the packages beautiful, you have to take the labels off. <laughs> let's get that collection together. Yes, the calendar is on the website. Yes, the calendar's on the website. And I'm going to send out an email about it, but, like, look at this collection right here. So this, we only will have one of this collection, like, if you want it, call right afterwards. But I have this desire to put together collections. Now I'm going to... I'm going to go get my fossil. Oh, I'll go get this. Just because I like to see them, the, this won't come with it, but we can see. Let's get another. What else we got here, Ange? What else would look good with that? Oh, this one would look beautiful with it. These are from our, uh, this is from our 14, these are all fourteen ninety five. this whole Oh, it looks like, Heather's saying it looks like sea urchins. Oh. Nice. So these five pieces, I would take one more thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the same? No, it's quite a bit deeper. So I just want to, I just like how they all look together and I just like putting them together. So what would you call this collection? I would call that, uh, to me, it's the stone truth set in stone. Stone. Is that someone calling to buy this? Do you think <laughs> <laughs> this is the stone? Um, yeah. I'd say this is called uh, set in stone. That's what I would call it, set in stone. I keep this on my desk because my father's always told me, honey, that's all you got. It's your truth. So I just try to be truthful. You know, sometimes I do tell little white lies. My, husband, my son says I, I exaggerate, so I buy it. I do sometimes. But, you know, it's something that to me, I, my friend, Heather Lawson, has passed now, but she was an artist in she had this in her studio and I bought it from her and I keep it on my desk near my picture of my dad just to remind me to try and tell the truth all the time as best you can anyway they spotted your rug Dan. oh they like it oh do you I we I really like the rug I don't like it on this wall I think we're gone over time Inge. sorry that's okay <clears throat> but I really love the rug I want it on the white wall but I think this area needs a more colorful rug I think it I think we need to change it. So we're going to change that. But I don't know what I'm putting up there yet. Haven't really got anything. Finish the rugs for my window. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. I'm just waiting for Barb's husband, John, to to bring me in the frames. And I imagine they'll be in sometime this week. I'm not complaining, John or Barb, if you happen to be watching. Anyway, see you. See you. All of these beautiful people who watch every week and who are patient. And with your orders, we are pretty much, we're trying to catch up on orders. We're trying to get them out the day off, uh, the day, the next day or the day after. This week, we had to get out all of the uh, webinar packs. So they're all gone. So that set us back a few days now. Right now, we yesterday we were shipping the day before. So we're doing pretty good. However, certain things we're out of stock on, like Slub is coming in today or tomorrow. And uh, it's being shipped to us. And uh, certain things were out of stock on, and then that sets us back. And we were waiting for some Briggs and Little, but it is now in the Mulberry. So that's where we are with orders. So we're, we're pretty caught up, eh, Edge? We're not too bad. Mm -hmm. We're pretty good. It's not perfect. We're getting better all the time. We're trying. We're at least trying. Look at that. That's a really nice little collection. So there's six pieces here. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Set in stone. See you later.